Hello and welcome back to yet another trove video on the channel. It is Latecom here and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Chloromancer as well as give you guys a rough idea on how you should be building your endgame Chloromancer build. And on top of that, give you guys a couple of tips on how you can optimize your damage as a Chloromancer main when it comes to dealing DPSs against bosses. Now, you guys might already know this, but I'm going to say it again. Chloromancer is going to be, at the end of the day, a one-trick pony when it comes to, you know, doing delves, clearing bosses and stuff, because the Chloromancer is only going to be good at DPS. Yes, the Chloromancer is going to be a beast when it comes to dealing damage against bosses, but other than that, when it comes to delve clears, flux farming, speed farming, it's going to be really, really inferior. So, we're only going to be focusing on the DPS aspect of the Chloromancer and definitely not anywhere near the farming aspects of the Chloromancer. So with that being said, let's begin with the video. So, starting off, we're going to be taking a look at this Max Chloromancer build that I have. We have got a full set of Crystal 4 hats, weapons, face, and a Crystal 4 ring to boot. And for the hats, weapons, and faces, we have got attack speed and crit damage on the 3rd and 5th stats, respectively. You know, these stats are pretty much going to be the basic stats that you should have if you're looking for a DPS class for a magic damage character, right? So, other than that, for the hats and weapons, what I'm going to be running is max health and crit hit. I'm going to be explaining why I'm doing this later on in the video, but let's now move on onto the ring. As you can see right here, we have got a Crystal 4 ring with crit hit as well. We'll talk about that later when we move on to the gems, so stay put on that. So as you can see right here, we're running the weird growth hidden effect, which allows us to spawn plants randomly when we get dealt any damage. Which, if you don't already know, more plants equals more damage. And it's not going to affect your larger plants that you get from the alt, because what actually spawns is the smaller plants that you would get if you're not using your alt. So it's not going to interfere with your 12 plant method, and it's still going to allow you to get more DPS. So this is pretty much a big win if you're using this weird growth hidden effect. So make sure you get a crystal ring with this hidden effect specifically, because it's going to help you a lot when it comes to dealing more damage, or to get you the most damage that you can, at least. Moving on onto the food, we're not going to talk much about this. It's definitely going to be free range electrolytic crystals. Moving on over onto the ally, though, this is going to be a separate different story, because... It's going to be a little bit controversial here because we have got two different allies that I'd like to talk about. Now, the first one is definitely going to be Puck, which is going to grant you that cooldown recovery speed by 25%, 300 light, and 20% magic damage. The other choice that we have that pretty much just got added into the game is the Orchin ally. Now, what the Orchin ally actually does is it grants you 100 additional light and 5 percent more magic damage as opposed to the puck ally but here's the catch the orchin ally doesn't really allow you to get that same cooldown recovery speed buff that the puck ally actually gives now some people would enjoy the additional light and magic damage more than the cooldown recovery speed but for me I'm trying to get the best build as possible, right? So the way I see this is with Puck, you will be able to set up your 12 plants easier. Um, we're going to be showing you guys how the 12 plant method works later on in this video as well. But essentially, Puck is going to make it a lot easier for you to set it up as opposed to the Orchin ally because you're going to have a split second quicker when you pop a flask. You're not going to actually need to wait you know, a couple of milliseconds to plant a new plant, which is going to help you a lot. Let's say we're going to use the Orchin ally right here. We're going to use our alt again. Let's say we right click, we pop a flask, right click, as you can see right there. We did need a split second longer to get that charge back up to put a brand new plant. And it's going to be a little inconvenient if you're using this in the long run against bosses because that little stagger might be what caused you to skip a flask sometimes at least which is going to be infuriating if you're fighting long hard bosses okay um that sounded wrong but let me rephrase that that's gonna it's gonna be harder for you to fight against um tankier bosses yes is what i wanted to say earlier which will really, really require you to 
spend your flask wisely. And that stagger is something that I don't really like having, so I'm gonna end up running Puck. But it will depend on you. If you're a casual player, that doesn't really matter if you deal a little less damage and just plant, you know, six or nine plants as opposed to the 12 plant strat. But, you know, Puck to me would be a little more practical if you're looking for the 12 plant method. So it will depend if, you know, you're just lazy to even bother with planting 12 plants and killing the boss easier with Puck, then go with Orchin because it's gonna save your sanity anyways. It's not like it's gonna be that game changing, but you know, I'm always gonna min-max everything, so I'm gonna go with the Puck for this one. But you can decide on it though. Let's move on over onto the banner. Of course, we have got the Enshadow Torch of the Hive, which is going to be a staple torch when it comes to any DPS classes, because it's gonna give you additional flasks and attack speed. There's nothing too much to be said about this. If you guys don't know where you get this one, it's gonna be from the Uber 10 Leviathans. That you get a permanent torch from, you go on over onto the uh, Sunseeker's Crystal Forge in the Uber spawns in the Geo top side, and then just craft one of these bad boys there. So let's move on over onto the emblems. Um, as usual, we have got the Chronomatic Emblem and the Arcane Emblem. These two are going to be really, really important emblems when it comes to dealing DPS, because, of course, you're going to reduce the cooldown of all your abilities when you pop a flask and proc this emblem. Whereas, this Arcane Emblem will allow you to deal 250% more magic damage for 3 seconds, which is a no-brainer. These two are things you should have and should use if you're looking for the best DPS. Now we have got the flask, and this is also going to depend on the situation. If you're fighting against bosses that are tankier, then go for the Elysian Bandolier because you're going to need more flasks to end up killing the boss over a longer period of time. But if you're actually fighting a less tankier boss and more flimsy boss, which you can deal with in about a minute or so, then go with the Death Defying Vial because it would be better for you to get that safeguard that, you know, doesn't get you killed when you're trying to deal damage to the boss. The subclass will also depend on the same variables, right? So if you're fighting against, as I've said earlier, a tankier boss, then go on with the Knight subclass for additional flasks. Whereas if you're fighting a weaker boss that you can deal with within a minute, go with the Bard subclass because it's going to give you 20% crit damage and on top of that, there is going to be three different buffs that you can proc when you're using the Bard subclass. Now the first one is going to be a movement speed buff, the second one is going to be a health and energy regeneration buff, and the third one, which is the buff that you should be waiting for, is the combat buff, which will grant you more damage over time. So let's move on over onto something that you guys have been waiting for, the gems. Of course, um, when we're playing a DPS class in the Joe top sides or in the delves, the Berserk Battler gem is a given. You're gonna need the additional 250 or 750 light. So I'm pretty sure you guys already know how the Berserk Battler works. So let's just leave it at that, alright? Um, Berserk Battler, pretty much one of the most important gems, if not the most important gem that you should have on a DPS Chloromancer. Now let's move on onto the couple of other gems. We have got a Stinging Curse and a Spirit Surge running on my Chloromancer build right now, in which is what I think is the best right now, at least for a tad bit additional damage. The Stinging Curse will allow you to deal damage over time to enemies, which also works on bosses, and the Spirit Surge will allow you to deal additional damage based on your max health. Which brings us back to why I actually have like crit hit on my ring and weapon, maximum health on the hat. Because I'm trying to get more crit hit so I can actually roll off a stat on my Empower Gem. You can also do this as well, it's going to be a viable method for you to actually get more max health. And pretty much if you're using the Spirit Surge gem, more max health would mean more additional damage. But you don't really have to min-max everything, you can just swap it off for anything else that you actually have. These ones are not going to be that game-changing, but I'm just going to try to get as much damage as possible, so these two gems are pretty much the ones that I'm going to run with. 
but you can pretty much use anything else as long as they're not stuff like Murd Mojo or you know any other useless stunning gem because you can't actually stun bosses anymore. Not even with Neon Ninja at least. So other than that we have got the class gem in which I think you should have the class gem because what other gems can you have other than the class gem, right? And the thing with the class gem is is going to depend on the situation because most of the time if you're fighting bosses the way that most of the players actually fight bosses when you're trying the 12 plant method is to jump pretty high and deal damage on top of the bosses when you're proccing all your flasks out and just putting your plants so pretty much um, if you're trying the 12 plant method then you're gonna be jumping pretty high to throw your plants at a safe distance away from each other so that they do not actually despawn so you can't actually get in the range of your, you know, class gems ability sometimes. Which is one of the main reasons why some people might not really like to use the class gem and might prefer swapping on over to, let's say, maybe Cubic Curtain. So when all is said and done, I would still recommend you guys to get the class gem. Because, I mean, any other gem wouldn't really give you that much of an advantage over the class gem, I guess. And not to mention, I believe you do actually um, spawn your plants way quicker in comparison to not actually having the class gem. If you're in the range, at least, you're going to be able to grow up your plants and that's what you want because when the plants grow up quicker, they're going to be able to damage the bosses quicker, which allows you to set your damage up quicker and get more damage which is the ideal situation for the chloromancer so that is it that is pretty much it for the chloromancer build now it's time to show you guys how i actually use the 12 um the 12 plant build all right with puck so the way i do this is um we're gonna use the elysian bandolier because we're gonna need more flasks for this but what i'm gonna do is number two we're gonna throw the plants at a safe distance away probably around seven blocks i believe away from each other at the least and i'm just gonna repeat this motion every single time right we're just gonna throw in a clockwise motion and get as many plants down as possible so this is the way that you should be playing your chloromancer throw your plants pretty much a safe distance away from each other. Sometimes you don't actually get 12 plants. It's going to heavily rely on your um, speed when it comes to setting this up because most of the time you'll get probably around 8 plants up, which is going to be a little annoying, but it's going to take you a while to master this way of throwing the plants because most of your damage actually comes from these shooter guys. And not really too much from these number one ability or your left click or your auto attack, whatever you call it. The general idea of getting more damage on the Chloromancer is the more right clicks that you have, the better. So the more plants that you can place down, the better. The more damage you can deal. And I would recommend you guys to maybe plant one of those spinny flowers to proc the Berserk Battler ability as much as possible. Just so you actually get that 750 light as opposed to the 251. Um, it's gonna be a helpful thing for a little bit more additional damage as well. So plant one of these spinny thingies every now and then. Well, not all the time, but just whenever you can, whenever it runs out, just plant it so that you can actually, you know, keep that Berserk Battler procced and alive. And I guess that's pretty much going to be it for this Chloromancer build. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. And if you did, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I guess that will be all from me. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys sometime soon. As usual, peace out.